Welcome to the segment of Dr. Klein's Info Series. Today's topic is Coenzyme Q10, ubiquinone versus ubiquinol, which form is more stable? And this is a question that I was asked recently and maybe didn't do a very good job at answering. So hopefully this time uh, I'm going to explain it more thoroughly and everybody who's going to watch it uh, is going to benefit from this information. Uh, and so uh, in, I guess, uh, certain circles, uh, a misconceived notion is circulated that ubiquinone, because it's oxidized, is a more, more stable form or a less stable form of coenzyme Q10. I want to speak to that. But first of all, coenzyme Q10 sits in the mitochondrial inner membrane. There are two barriers to uh, uh, membranes for, to, to the mitochondria. It sits in the inner portion, an inner membrane, and passes electrons from complex two to complex three within the electron transport chain. And it's basically part of the energy production apparatus mechanism of the cell. I'm going to show you a diagram in a moment. And ubiquinone is the oxidized form of coenzyme Q10, and ubiquinone is the reduced form of this coenzyme. And it is, I think, misconceived to suggest that um, because ubiquinone is oxidized, it is not stable, and conversely, ubiquinone is stable. And keep in mind that most studies demonstrating clinical relevance were done with ubiquinone, whether it's uh, congestive heart failure, high blood pressure, neurodegenerative disorders. Mostly, the, these studies were done mostly with ubiquinone. So this basically basically represents uh, cellular respiration, the way the cells produce energy, uh, glucose uh, or fats are metabolized. Uh, to produce energy through glycolysis over here, two ATPs are produced here, through the Krebs cycle, two ATPs are produced here to, to lock in uh, uh, energy for use by the cells. And most of the energy is done and is produced within the electron transport chain, uh, consisting of several complex, complex one, complex two, complex three, and complex four. And within here, you also have coenzyme Q10 right here, cytochrome C, which requires copper right here, Notice that a lot of different vitamins and minerals are needed uh, for this. Uh, wherever you see NAD, it's a derivative of vitamin B3. Wherever you see FAD, it's a derivative of vitamin B2, riboflavin. And so coenzyme Q10 basically does what uh, many of these cofactors do, which is pass on electrons until they reach the ATPase uh, synthase molecule at the end here. And that's where most of the ATP is produced. And so um, let's look again at coenzyme Q10 specifically. And this is the oxidized form and this is the reduced form. And it sits right here and it changes forms from one to the other as it relieves electrons and passes them on later on. So just uh, uh, the definition of, of what considered oxidized, oxidized is a molecule that either has given away an electron or has the capacity to receive an electron. And the a reduced form is a molecule that has, uh, has uh, received an electron or has the capacity to give away an electron. Generally, reduced, uh, reduced molecule has a more negative charge or the potential for it, and an oxidized molecule has a more positive charge or the potential for it. And so coenzyme Q10, the oxidized form here, basically consists of a ring here. Uh, here, you've got a side chain that repeats itself 10 times, hence it's called coenzyme Q10. And you've got basically, it consists of uh, oxygens, carbons, each corner here is a carbon, and hydrogens. And it's really this part here of the molecule, the oxygen with the, with the double bond here, that has the capacity to receive electrons from this part of the transport chain and move them along to this part of the transport chain. And so these electrons basically destabilize this oxygen molecule as well, and it becomes negative, becomes semiquinone. Now this is the actual, this is the unstable form of the molecule. And so an electron would bind itself to this part and to this part, and to become stable again, because electrons has a negative charge, this requires now an atom with a positive charge to balance it out. And of course, protons are the most common way, most common stabilizing forces uh, in biochemistry. And so this, this part here turns from an oxygen with a double bond to an oxygen with a single bond, a hydrogen attached to it. And that's called the hydroxyl group. So this is the reduced form of the molecule, and this is the 
oxidized form of the molecule. Both are stable. Both ubiquinone and ubiquinol are perfectly stable. The unstable part is a semi-ubiquinone where you have an ion here, a negative charge, uh, two negative charges, one on top, one at the bottom. And of course, it doesn't remain like this for long. This whole process happens so quickly multiple times, all the time. And that's basically what you, coenzyme Q10 do or does. It moves electrons and along, and so it turns from ubiquinone to ubiquinol over and over and over again. Once ubiquinol gives away its electrons um, and hydrogen as well, it turns back into ubiquinone and does it over and over again. So hopefully this clarifies um, the whole stability issue here. And of course, coenzyme Q10 is one of the key molecules that are 23 or key ingredients that are 23 in Healthy Heart Plus. Uh, it is there because uh, it is important for the heart, important to strengthen the heart, support healthy blood pressure, energy production, of course. And it is what uh, it is the ingredient that lent us the uh, support, uh, maintain and support healthy blood pressure. Uh, levels claim from Health Canada. That's why we can say that on the label, that this product can help uh, support healthy blood pressure uh, levels. And basically to do that, we had to, to receive that claim, we had to submit four studies demonstrating the benefit, the ability of, uh, of coins Q10 to reduce uh, high blood pressure by an average of 15 points over eight points. So four studies using 100 to 120 milligrams showing a significant reduction in high blood pressure. And of course, it was the ubiquinone form that was used, and that's why we used ubiquinone in this product as well. Um, so yes, that's basically it for now. I may speak to the absorbability of ubiquinol versus ubiquinone in a future episode. I'll speak to you know what else uh, you need along with coins and Q10 to produce energy. But that's it for now. And if you do want to uh, follow me and follow us, the company, Nanto Nutraceuticals. Uh, you can go to instagram.com slash uh, forward slash Roziva Stress. You can also follow me now with a new account at Ask a Wellness Doctor. Uh, Facebook as well uh, at Roziva Stress. And if you want to receive video notifications and watch on your own, then just click on the subscribe button. Until next time.